what's big and purple and looks terribly painful? If you said the giant bump in your head you got from repeatedly bashing your face into the wall after watching a shitty movie, you're right. And fuck, I'm sorry, because we watched the amazing bulk this week on B Movie Mania! Am I the only one that remembered to do that? <laughs> Welcome to the crossroads of camp, the bastion of the bazaar, the place where low budgets meet high praise. Yes, it's B-Movie Mania. And now, B-Movie Maniacs, here are your hosts, the cream of the crap, the connoisseurs of cult, your cinematic creepy uncles, Paul Brooks, Mike Hayes, Jason Hulls, and Crazy Chris Hudson. It's big purple and filled with Mike Hayes. <sighs> Welcome to the show. Welcome to B-Movie Mania. Let me introduce Paul Brooks to you. <sighs> Jay Hulls. Hi. Hello. <sighs> Hi, Chris. Mike, I have been better. <laughs> What's wrong? <sighs> Mike, can I can I just sigh for 45 minutes? Can, can that be like my review of this movie? It would be a better production <sighs> than this fucking beast of a movie. Mike, what did you do to us? Uh, I, I showed you guys the classic 2012 The Amazing Bulk movie. You sure did. Listen, guys, I don't know what your beef is. With this classic tale of a man who gets mugged and then becomes a monster that looks like a child made it out of clay. It's a mockbuster, technically, I guess. Um, though it's not funded by any of the usuals. It's not a. It's not an asylum film or anything like that. Mike, what did you? Uh, you were clearly the most enthusiastic about this. What did you like about it so much? Let's just get this out of the way. So we can just bitch for the rest of the episode. Uh, I mean, what I liked about it was how uh, creative it was. <laughs> they used clip art, Mike. The entire movie is clip art. I know. And we'll get into this, but I'm pretty sure it was a genuine a genuine attempt to make a film. <laughs> I think, I agree. I think it was. Yeah. This was not a, a Birdemic type movie. This is no, not... This... By the way, I think it's important to say something before we get too too deep into the woods here on this. If you're listening to the show and for whatever reason you haven't actually watched the movie, because I know that, you know, we're early on here in the, uh, in our, in our run here on B-Movie Mania, you just, I'm sorry, I appreciate you listening to the show, I really do, but you need to turn off the podcast or pause it and go watch the damn movie because there's no way that we can explain what in the purple shit was going on <laughs> with this movie if you haven't seen it. It, well, this is one movie that I would even recommend watching. Like, some stuff would be like, it doesn't matter if you watch it. I think I had fun watching this movie. I'm just going to say it right off the bat. Did you, Mike, did you watch it with uh, with friends, with some other people? No, not at any point. I watched it like five times in the past two months, every time by myself. Oh, God. And wow. you still had fun? Yeah. I, I could maybe see how it's what? fun with friends, but... God. This is I my mind is being blown right now because I am trying to look up the plot summary of the amazing bulk on IMDb, right? And and I had the tab opened earlier today, preparing for this, and it said what the plot was, and the plot was what the plot is. But between probably about 5:30 this evening and and now, which is probably about 4 hours, someone has literally rewritten it on IMDb. <laughs> I don't know how how you can do that. Wow. It is something else. I'm going to read you what this supposedly says it is. And this is kind of amazing. Uh, bulk. <laughs> the amazing bulk. Hannah, an ambitious woman and her, fa and her father's company, struggled to develop a superhuman serum designed to make someone be a huge bonsai buddy monster. He also... What? <laughs> I don't know. He also... <laughs> he also strives to eat a lot of dust since he doesn't want it building up in his home. <laughs> <laughs> General Darwin, her father, refuses to let her live her own life and fuck who she wants. This creates problems in developing what she set out to accomplish and create. With the military on his side, Darwin sets out to destroy Adolf Hitler and his 
men who seek to steal what he has created. No, no that's right. No, I read that on Sunday. That was that was the uh, so, somebody was must, it there? Yeah, because well, then where did I read it go? I read that on Sunday. I thought it was hilarious. And I was like, was the bad guy supposed to be Hitler? You said that that's on IMDb. Yeah. yeah. It's it's like I can't find the proper. I saw the proper plot summary though. I don't understand what's going on. The movie is a basically the the Incredible Hulk story, uh, sort of, and told from the view of a shithead, uh, an insane person, a shithead with crappy tattoos. <laughs> yeah, God. Well, here we go. Amazon's got the proper description here. Okay. Uh, Henry Howard is an ambitious young scientist who takes an experimental serum for building muscle mass and is transformed into the bulk, sending him on a bizarre and destructive rampage of revenge from which he may never return. In a world that does not understand him, he wants to destroy and, and wants to destroy him. So, so that that's great. what happened. That's <laughs> this is literally a movie Does anyone know what actually happened in this movie we will bring it up i'm sure we all have i want everyone as we're going through this sort of talking about this chronologically the point where your brain turned off and stopped trying i wrote like, it down oh, wow did you i know, I know, where it I is know too. exactly when. i figured everyone would have the point so um because <laughs> this thing oh my god well Okay, first of all, let's talk about the budget of this movie, guys. How much do you think this movie cost to make? Twelve dollars. Twelve. Like, give me a legitimate. I, I looked it up. I, so I know. Paul, what do you think? You didn't look it up, right? I no, I didn't look it up. But that's you know, I mean, most of the well, ninety-five percent of the movie was done on green screen, and so really, all you all you needed was you know a little bit of catering, like a lab coat, and I th- and like two fucking Hulk hands from Toys R Us, <laughs> so like twelve dollars. Yeah, they didn't even like have. They didn't even have props. They CGI'd so many of the props. <laughs> yeah, my terrible. favorite part was the running. <laughs> Anytime there was running, God. okay, just, just running in place. So yeah. yeah, so a la Repo Check. In case I mean, since that's a good reference that everyone's oh, seen, right? Thanks for rem- reminding me of that movie. Yeah. Well, basically, every literally every single shot is green screened. Everything. This thing was shot in a sound studio. If you want, I'm assuming it was the smallest sound studio ever in L.A. And it's every single shot is green screen. Every 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 single thing. There at I no point. I wouldn't say that the uh, it's the it was the smallest sound uh, green screen studio in L.A. because the sound was atrocious. God. It was very airy, and they clearly did <laughs> not true. have a good boom operator. Yeah. You think they had a boom <laughs> operator? Probably not. I really feel like I'm in the middle here. I know Mike really likes this, and you, Paul and Chris seem to really not like it. I'm right in the middle, because like, I really do think this could be a lot of fun in the right circumstances. Like, I will watch this movie again. I'm trying to get friends to watch it with me. I, I want people to watch this movie. I would do watch it again with friends and alcohol. Drinking rules. Anytime your brain goes, what the fuck is happening? Well, you're, no, come on. Don't say that because you'll, you'll literally be in the hospital. You'll kill your friends. <laughs> you'll kill your friends, Mike. <laughs> That's my plan, boys. So, Paul, would you ever watch this again? Well, I've seen it twice. Uh, I watched it a couple nights ago for the second time. And here's, here's the thing about this movie for me. You guys know me. I have, you know, I'm a, I'm a B-movie maniac and I have certain things that I will watch over and over and over again. The types of movies that are the best B-movies are the types of movies where they really tried to, you know, put their heart and soul into it and and make the best possible movie that they could make. And the problem with Amazing Bulk is that I literally have no idea if that's what they were trying to do or if they were like, let's make the biggest pile of shit we can possibly make. Yeah, I couldn't tell. I agree with you. I couldn't tell by the tone. It was part of it was seemed like they were taking it very seriously, but so much of this was like, what what were they thinking? Like the the acting seemed serious, but all the effects and just a lot of the storyline of the plot was just like, what? It's very possible the actors had no idea what the final product was going to look like. I don't know at what point he involved them, but it's possible that he just said, oh, this is going to be on a soundstage. It's going to look like Sin City. You know, That's a good point. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what the director has said in response to all the criticism he's gotten. Oh. I have. This is. See, I liked. I kind of liked that it walked that line of like, 
did this guy try set out to make a movie and then like give up at some point or right. you know was it intentional or do, is it intentional and in not the intent of making a bad movie does he think these are funny jokes that he's putting in here like I, you know i have no idea what's going on in this guy's brain and then i read this quote from him this is what's from his my name uh uh Schuburn or something. Lo- uh, Lewis Lewis Schoenbrun. Schoenbrun. Yeah. Lewis Schoenbrun. Um, okay. So he, in response to the criticisms, director Schoenbrun has stated that the film is supposed to belong to the in the same vein as films like Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and that most critics quote just don't get the concept of live action people in a comic book world. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, we're just stupid. It's it's our it's, problem. It is. He also considered. He also said he retroactively considers it a parody. Yeah, exactly. So he taught he, me why so did. Yeah, he taught me why so did. So I. That's why I think he was really trying to make the best thing he could with what he had, which may not have been much. Well, w- let's talk about what he had. He went down to Best Buy one day and found a. $9.99 box of like crappy clip art and <laughs> just said, I'm using all of this. Yeah, uh, it, it was it's Turbo Squid and what else? It, like pretty uh, much all of the main sites he just pulled from. Yeah, he, he didn't even go to a, a store, Paul. He downloaded this shit from online, free sources online. And it oh, took are you him, serious? Yeah, yeah, it took him like six months to find everything. <laughs> yeah, because that <laughs> shot of Zeus was so important to have in the movie. Throwing the lightning bolt. Yeah, wait, are... Wait, whoa, back up, back up. Are you trying to tell me that he wrote the script and then went out and found clips for for everything that was in the script? Paul? I believe so. Paul, let me read you let me read you from Wik- from Wikipedia about this. Please, please. <laughs> Director Lewis Schoenbrunn was researching st- was researching stock computer generated imagery for the production of a low budget horror mockbuster of Spider-Man starring a female protagonist. When discussing with the producer the idea of making a comic book film featuring large amounts of green screen, he instead decided to create a, a parody of the character, the, a Hulk, though he has retroactively claimed that. Um, yeah. Many of the characters had blatant parallels to the story, but yeah, he was doing something totally different and went, I can do that. So then he wrote the screenwriting for the film was completed over a span of four months. So four apparently months. spent more time than I would have thought. That's insane. <laughs> Why was it four months? How did, how, there's no script at, there, there's, oh my God. Okay, mind blown right now. Honestly, mind blown because I am I was absolutely convinced that he had access to some sort of video library and he said I'm going to build a movie around all these clips. No. My my wife watched this with me and she's the first thing she said was it looked like a homework assignment for a beginner's CG class. <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. No, that's I, yeah, there was there was a bunch of different art styles throughout. Like you'd think like 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 a movie like Repo Check, which if you haven't seen it, please check it out. It's ama- it's literally the actual sequel to Repo Man. Um, oh, God. It it's it is everything's green screened and it's terrible, but it is consistent. the 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 art is consistent. <laughs> that right. this True. thing literally starts out one style, and you're like, okay, this is what we're getting into, and then and then it jumps into what looks like a college student like animation class background and then it jumps into MS Paint and then it jumps into fucking like what looks like a 1998 like Oregon Trail remastered version uh, it's like it doesn't make any sense every it's all over the place <laughs> so but that makes some a certain amount of sense because as you said he was pulling it from from various sources online exactly yeah that's why it's not consistent um apparently <sighs> Paul, so getting back to that budget question here, um, yeah. the, he, the director financed it in himself, <laughs> and and uh, shooting the film cost six thousand dollars and took place over five days. Um, wow! <laughs> the entire film was shot on green screen stage in California. Audio mixing cost three thousand. Color correction, there was apparently color correction. <laughs> Had to get that perfect shade of purple. <laughs> yeah, and then and then I guess okay, so he didn't take everything for free. He paid for the, a lot of the clip art, I guess. But it's all stock Why would images. You pay for and that, that clip cost art. about four thousand. That was terrible. <laughs> about four thousand for the CGI, the clip art, and like the composer. And other elements. So lumped into four thousand dollars, got him a score, which consisted a lot of free, like classical music, and and what whoever did the shittiest job of three D animating a, a a bulk a, a a purple turd on the screen um, that was custom made. See, yeah, I'm surprised yeah, that because was, I that, thought even the bulk was clip art. Right, me too. Because I'm like, as I'm watching the movie, I'm like, okay, you you see it like every now and then, but 
it's actually really just only like the same four yeah. clips over and over again. I thought I thought it was just really bad motion capture. Like the guy couldn't move in his suit or something. <laughs> like it was just he, the worst motion capture ever. He is literally the bulk runs away a lot of the time. And I, I don't know if you guys had the same thought, but I instantly thought about that old like 90s 3D animated baby on the internet that danced. Oh, Remember that thing? Like it oh, looks, yeah. it runs like that fucking baby dances. Like it doesn't. It's it's like a shimmy. It shimmies down the street. It's weird. I wish that that baby treated cars the same way the Amazing Bulk treats cars. You mean car? There was car. one car in the whole film. I think there were three cars, one of which was as large as the as the female cop. <laughs> oh, but yeah, by the way, can we talk about scale a little bit? Can we get into that? Oh my God. No, yeah, go for it, Paul. Uh, it's, it's, it's certain, there are certain shots where the amazing bulk, the titular amazing bulk, <laughs> looks to be about seven feet tall. He sort of like towers yeah. over regular sized humans. And you're like, okay, that's kind of a tall, you know, Hulk like creature. But then there are shots where he's like out running through streets and like a helicopter is he grabs following the helicopter. him and like yeah he grabs the helicopter and crushes it like he's godzilla <laughs> like it's the scale is just all over the fucking place. well to be fair paul they did t the pilot did get really low so he could get the shot because he didn't <laughs> on, zoom in on his fucking canon xh1 the xha1 that he was just holding he couldn't <laughs> zoom in on it they had to get down there with that helicopter now, see, paul, you know I'm, what i'm gonna spend the rest of this podcast i'm gonna spend the rest of this time defending the amazing book now, now paul paul <laughs> I, I gotta agree with jay for a moment i think that's I think the Amazing Bulk had three powers. Running away, making cars just flip <laughs> off of him, fly off into space, and change his size at will. Those are his three powers. Yeah. Right. Wow, yeah, I didn't think about that. Maybe he was a little bit of like a shapeshifter. Which, yeah. can I ask a question in case I missed this? Did they... Did anybody actually ever call him the Bulk? <laughs> uh, uh, was it in a newspaper? No. They showed a newspaper once or twice, right? Did I they? don't think so. Were, I don't think they but ever. Were the did newspapers call him the Bulk. real or CGI? They were 100% CGI. <laughs> well, how often um, does the Incredible Hulk get called uh, the Incredible Hulk? That's his name, I think, right? Yeah, no, they call him the Hulk. I, I've never seen any of the fucking Marvel movies. At the very beginning, there were two parody ripoff studio. Production. Oh, I think there were three. Oh, there were God. three, maybe even four. Was there? Yeah. There, there was were... Universal. There was Fox. Well, it was weird because it was like obviously this fucker's like let's let's make a a funny joke out of the Universal logo, which doesn't make any sense. Like, I, I, is that funny? It's, no, it's not. <laughs> but it is timely. It did set the tone for like oh shit, I got I can't take nothing's going to be good in this movie because even the jokes are yeah, bad. I just thought they were trying too hard. Yeah, it's it's literally he he probably had a, like five more dollars to give the CGI guy and is like, yeah, all right, fine. I'll do that. <laughs> I think it sets the tone. It like lets you know it's okay to laugh at everything. Yeah, I yeah, guess it kind of does. So. But, but the, it, again, that kind of brings me back to like, well, what kind of a bad movie or a B movie is this? Is it a bad movie or is it just supposed to be, you know, trying to be funny? Because there's, there's, look, there's no way as a filmmaker you make this movie and then say, yeah, I think people are really going to like this. <laughs> oh, no shit. way. Forget it. I looked over at my, I watched this with my girlfriend a couple nights ago and I was like eating some food. So I was leaning forward a little bit and we were like, a couple minutes into the movie and she she's she's great with like laughing and reacting she's great to watch movies with i was i was confused because i hadn't heard anything from her i looked i turned my head i looked behind me and her jaw is just hanging <laughs> open the entire time <laughs> she didn't know what to do uh, well i think that's the right response that is yeah. like if you're not feeling that way while watching this movie you there is something legitimately wrong with you correct <laughs> okay so let's talk about the hooker then paul oh my god just wanted to say that i thought she was hot and she was my favorite part you of the think movie everyone's hot paul oh well, no I, the, you would you probably fucking... thought the bulk had a couple nice things going on too yeah, a nice ass <laughs> we didn't even get to see any any more of the bulk in the blowjob scene yeah, remember? Yeah, remember when he got a fucking handy from the the Lolita girl? Yep. That like Lolita chick had like one yellow tooth that I just could not stop staring at. Oh, it's it shines. That was also CG. Oh, see, I that she did it for me, Paul. Like I I even tweeted at her and told her she was the best thing about the movie, 
and I got no response. You did not. Oh, I totally did. I totally did. Did you really? Yeah. I got a couple likes on it, but she didn't respond. I think it added to her character. Yeah. Okay, so speaking of those characters, that those okay, so there was there was the the Baron von or Count von Cantlove, which they We've kept We barely talked about him. They kept making a cunt joke throughout the whole thing. Yeah. Like, that was weird, right? And out of, like, there's not really any, there's a little bit of swearing in the movie. It's not like it's grotesque or anything. I mean, they probably dropped the F-bomb a couple times, but they keep making a cunt joke, and it's just, like, so, yeah, it was, it was seemed really out of place. Because look, we haven't really touched too much on, like, the main villain and sort of, like, what his deal is. The general? Oh, yeah, I guess, well, yeah, I guess there's really two main villains. Who, I, I, I don't know how to, who would who would you consider to be the, the main villain? Well, it's the general, the dad. The, his girlfriend's dad is the right. main, main bad guy. Because especially as it turns out, he's pitted the stereotypical German count against, you know, he he's double-crossed him kind of a right, deal. Right. But, so, but, but I, th- I kind of think the general's main enemy was dust. No, <laughs> exactly. The general has... <laughs> This amazing line of just, just, I hate dust out of nowhere. Like, that's his establishing shot. That's his introductory scene. Yeah, I hate dust. And then he has some weird conspiracy theory that, that is not told as a joke uh, about how dust bunnies are going to rise up and take over the earth. And he is not smiling at any point. Not that he had any sort of emotion or expression on his face oh, at any point in the actor, movie. I just wanted it again. Probably a nice guy, maybe, but I just wanted to kick that guy in the nuts so hard. <laughs> just so you guys know, the point that really brought me out of the movie, getting back to that, is when the general, his rank is his rank looks like stars. Mm-hmm. He had a staff sergeant rank on his uniform. So oh. totally to the military authenticity of this movie completely like ruined it for me. There was no authenticity. For you viewers who are not aware, Chris is an army man. I'm a military yeah. man. Are you serious, Chris? Is that the point where your brain shut off and you stopped trying to pay attention no, to what happened in the no, plot? No, that, that was okay. just one more tally to the mark. <laughs> yeah. I just had to say that. I mean... I'm trying to remember um, what happened at the 47-minute mark because I actually wrote in my notes, at 47 minutes, I started to wonder how much more of this there was and how much more <laughs> I could take. I took a note... I made a note about 15 minutes earlier than you, Jay. Yeah, it's interesting because it's only an hour and 15 minutes long, but it feels longer than well, that. Yeah, well, there's two, there's, they, they do two basic storylines. Like, you think the main storyline is ends, like when the bulk, you know, the cops come, there's these cops and they come and they are, they, they find out that the bulk killed the, the mugger and the hooker, or killed the mugger. And so then there's a, a, a giant chase scene, if you want to call it that, uh, that happens. And so like that happens and cars explode and the, one of the cops dies by a, a weirdly sized car. <laughs> After careening <laughs> off the bulk's leg. Yeah, and then the bulk goes to like prison. And then like at that point where I stop, like I, I, I've seen the movie like five times. So I know what's coming up. I know everything that's happening. But I'm still just like, I don't want to go through the rest of the movie. <laughs> You know what I had a problem with right there? Is there no due process for the bulk? <laughs> like, he just went straight to prison. Stop defending him. I wanted some courtroom drama with the bulk. But even from the beginning, that bald cop was so suspicious of him. Like, when, you know, when he talked to Hen- Henry, or Hank, or whatever the hell his name was, like, in his apartment, you know, where were you? You know, he's just so suspicious from the... Is that the scene when he had the purple hand? Like, he had the blood still... Uh, yeah, yeah. In the yeah, military yeah. compound. So does he have... Like, does the human, like, version have purple blood? Or, I don't know. I, I'm so confused. How could you possibly be confused by this movie? <laughs> it's laid out so perfectly. <laughs> so so the movie starts with a, a flash forward, we find out, of, of the, the mugger and then the hooker, right? The mugger does this really, like... If this film was shot by any sort of competent director, that opening scene would be fucking terrifying. Like, he literally, the mugger literally shoves a gun in a hooker's mouth and shoots her in the head. Like, well, that's wait, what happens. Well, wait, hold on a second. I'm sorry, Mike, but are you saying, are you saying that if, let's just take, for instance, Martin Scorsese had directed this, <laughs> but it was still using all the CG elements, it would be better? No, I meant like, I guess I did only specify that the director had the change. But you know what? I'm going to go ahead and say that, yeah, I'll stand by that statement. That's Scorsese, probably true. If Scorsese directed a stock God. background CGI <laughs> film, <laughs> Martin Scorsese's The Amazing Bulk, a CGI, yeah. CGI travesty, it would be better. 
I'd watch it. You said that the that the mugger kills the hooker by shoving a gun in her mouth. It would be terrifying. Well, d- you do realize as this as the movie goes on that the bulk watched all of this happen. He did not stop the mugger until after he'd killed the hooker. Yeah, he did have some really good reaction acting that was going on when when we jumped did ahead. He? No, did he? No, did. he? I was lying. Sorry, I was pulling a J. Uh, <laughs> it's not stopping, baby. <laughs> no, okay. So so we see that, and then like. The, the, we, we jump into like a laboratory and we find out that the main character is a scientist and he's a shitty scientist and there's like CGI rats in this laboratory that <laughs> that he, he's, he's testing on, right? He's testing the, 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 the serum on them and they literally, when they die, they th- like a, a Apple Mac screensaver from 2003 happens on their body <laughs> and then they just disappear. Well, like, they disappear in smoke and the, yeah. the bulk turns into the bulk and smoke. Oh, so is Jay? there a connection? Maybe. Jay, wait a minute. You're turning me on to thinking this was maybe a properly thought out film. Wait mm. a second. Yeah. The, when the rats die, they, they evaporate in a puff of dust now. And, and so does the human he has that fart cloud around him <laughs> and then he turns into the bulk. So I'm, I'm thinking that was actually intentional. Wow. So we find out like whatever the, 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 he sucks as a scientist. It turns out his girlfriend's dad is a general who's employing them. Uh, he wants to ask his girlfriend to marry him, but the dad's like dick. And he's like, no, you got to fucking do good science or else you're a deadbeat. And that's when he sees the mugger and kill the cooker and he kills the mugger. Uh, isn't there hold on a second can i back you up for one second yeah sure i mean this is the most this is like how <laughs> laborsome is it trying to figure out and describe yeah, the plot you know of this i movie. thought this was going to be a, a quick movie to unpack but there's it turns out there's a lot to <laughs> it a lot what's the main character's name I, he's so hank hank i i don't know if i've ever seen a, someone in a movie try to propose in a more like <laughs> shitty fashion to your fiance. Like, the first time he tried to do it on, like, a crappy CG, like, <laughs> green chair or something? He, was well, that he the did first it, time? He did it on the subway. Yeah. he, well, did, he was he going did it to on, on the like, subway. Literally, like, the, the goddamn city subway where, like, a, a, like bums have pissed, like, ten minutes before. <laughs> right before the mugger <laughs> mugs him, right? The mugger he kills. Yeah, yeah right before. Oh, God. Uh, okay, so I just wanted to mention that. Just, like... What a what a hopeless romantic just proposing on the subway. Yeah. Well, what I'm trying to push this towards is we mentioned Lolita and the the Count von uh, Cantlove, uh, and and they live in like a medieval castle apparently. <laughs> a clip and, art medieval castle. And it's it's he he can't get a boner. So we find out that the serum he he's actually paying the government has stopped paying so he is paying the, for the serum to be made so he get f- to fix his fucking ED. And, and like, <laughs> the thing is, the, the, we, we jump to that scene and there's two guys holding like <laughs> shields and their little like as guards masks. in, in black. Well, the first one, they don't even have masks on. They just wearing black t-shirts. Black t-shirts and I instantly noticed spears. they don't even have the same black t-shirt on. How hard is it to have two of the same black t-shirts? One of them is a crew cut. One's a V-neck. What the fuck? You can't even do that right. One of them is more stylish. That's literally what it was. And, and so, but what I want to get to is we jump to this, we, the first time we jump to this weird castle and you're very confused because this is a weird fucking situation in this whole story. We see the weird, big, big titted, you know, bimbo Lolita. She's a dumb, dumb. And, and, and then we meet the weird cartoon character, but real life Baron, whoever the fuck that guy is. And then we catch a CGI dog that has (laughs) literally... No point in the movie. At no point does this dog do anything. It's like a shitty looking pug. I was like, wait, did I just, did they just throw a CGI dog in here for no reason? And then they cut, they like, they cut to close ups of it and it's not good. Like they stretch it. Like it's pixelated as shit. It's a mid 90s screensaver. That's got it. That's what it is. It's fucking insane. Like that dog baffles me. And so as we as we follow them along a bit, we realize that this Lolita chick is horny, mm-hmm. obviously, but she can't get it from her guy because he can't get it up. So he happens to just have an arsenal of missiles that he sends and blows shit up. Clip art missiles. Yeah, like not just blows shit up. I like like blows up like like the Hollywood sign and like blow. What else does he? He blows up like cities. Every monument, Mount Rushmore, like the Sphinx and the fucking Eiffel Tower or something. I mean, what I don't understand is that 
that happens and you're like, okay, this is a major fucking plot point. Like this, this changes the course of the movie. Nothing happens with it. Like no one, even none of the other characters even mention it. Yeah. No one even really like knows who he is. I think Hank's even surprised when he hears about him. Um, oh. but, but as, as Lolita and the Baron are walking down this hallway, giving double entendre throughout, cause we don't know what's happening yet. So they go to that launch room and they walk into that launch room. Chris Hudson, what do they see in that launch room? <laughs> the goddamn monkey. God damn it. The There's fucking a fucking CGI, CGI monkey. monkey. God damn it. Like, for no reason either. Like, he, that monkey does so li- Oh, wait, no. The monkey does do something no, amazing. The monkey saves the moon. The moon. Yeah, the bulk does nothing to save the moon. <laughs> that's right. The monkey literally... Oh my that's like, god. That's an entirely oh. different movie. Like, the movie doesn't care that this oh. bad guy is going to blow up the moon and the monkey apparently saves it. That's just totally beside the point. I would watch a movie about a CGI monkey saving the moon. <laughs> so the so the Amazing Bulk really is kind of like almost an anti-hero, a Walter White type, if you will. Are you are you Jay in us now, Paul? Are you on Jay's side? <laughs> Come over to my side, Paul. It's a lot more fun. Ah, uh, come over to the purple side. <laughs> I I have to I have to mention this, Mike. Let me hear it. Um, you know, like you, there's a, a shitty looking pug. There's a stupid fucking monkey in this movie. There's there's CG and they look like hot garbage. But I'm watching it and I'm like, okay, well, all right. At least they're kind of keeping a consistency with like humans are human like humans are real humans and and animals and stuff like that are cg yeah no no that goes out the fucking window <laughs> are you talking about the big chase oh, the which big one like, you know we have to, you, know, you know we have to get to this you know we have to talk about it when the, the moment this movie goes off the oh, fucking rails <laughs> i don't even know how to describe it was it robin hood paul did, did you have a problem with Robin Hood? Or, or was it Zeus? This is why I thought that they had purchased, like, they went to Walmart and per- purchased, like, a video clip art thing because they just, they're like, fuck it, throw everything in. If, like, Robin Hood, who else? The the, the Baron, Baron, like, in his goddamn airplane? <laughs> Red Baron? Zeus. Zeus. Yeah, Zeus? It's a fucking pirate ship. He runs a by leprechaun. a pirate ship. A leprechaun. <laughs> yeah, there's a leprechaun. God. Wasn't the leprechaun also in the scene when he was like with the, his girlfriend? Wasn't that earlier too? Yeah, was, the, the guy just like walks past that the leprechaun or some shit. It. And they just like, don't. Like, yeah, they just throw. They threw everything in there like towards the end of the movie with like ten minutes left. They're like, we haven't used any of this stuff yet, Let's so throw it just in. chuck it in there. Yeah, there's a handful of extended scenes or montages that if you want to, if you want to give enough credit to consider it editing, it's a montage. Um, that are way too long. There's like that whole scene of like satellites fucking each other. God. Um, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that was terrible. Yeah. Which, which apparently the director has been quoted as claiming it was a, it was a tribute to Stanley Kubrick. <laughs> I was just gonna say it's very, it was very 2001 in yeah. the worst which, possible way. Which, which is also why Lolita was named Lolita apparently, oh, and the Baron Von or Count Von Kant Love is supposed to be a Doctor Strange Love reference. Oh, Jesus, as well as the animated clip art of like a Cuban dropping a bomb down. Like, oh god. Now I have to say though that that the whole montage did bring a tear to my eye um, when the the bulk supposedly died. We cut to a shot of that CGI dog <laughs> with wings. Watching the proceedings next to an angel. Aww. Did the dog oh, die? Yeah, he yeah, died too. Apparently. I'm so sad. The dog yeah, died. The, dog dies, the CGI apparently. dog died. I'm just... He's in heaven. Yeah. <sighs> I'm glad as hell. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. God. Yeah. Like, there's a whole scene. Okay. So, so the 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 bulk is running away from the military because the military after he kills the the Baron. He, Wait, the red the military Baron or tries to attack the him other Baron? It, uh, sorry, the Count. The count count yeah. Cunt okay. Love. Like, sorry, Can't Love. <laughs> Get a, um, hey, when you've got CGI clip art of the Red Baron, you've got to be specific. Oh my god, yeah. So as he's he's trying, he, he needs to run away from the military, so there's like a three minute long montage with some classic classical song, I don't know which one it was, <laughs> and it's him running through, that's what Paul, Paul's describing here, just everything, he's going through 
uh, a generic background to like literally a golf course with a guy putting a hole in one and like a rainbow with a leprechaun and a fucking just kangaroos on swings and like none of it makes sense. And it's two songs. If they were going to do a whole fucking one song on it, it lasts an entire <clears throat> song. Oh, and then no, that song, right. st- then that song ends, and another one starts, <laughs> and they continue the montage. There is literally no reason to do that. Jump to the next thing. They don't. They start a new oh. song and continue the fucking montage of garbage. <laughs> Did you guys notice in the MS Paint cars that people sit in? Because every car people sat in was made in MS Paint. It seems. Um, did you guys notice the couches they were sitting on? Like, oh, were there couches in they, the car? It was so obviously a couch they were sitting on. It is right. amazing. There, right. There's a scene oh, later God. in the movie when the Henry and his girlfriend, the, um, they fucking sit down on chairs, but the chairs are CGI. So, you know, they, they sat on real chairs... They had to replace them with really bad <laughs> CGI chairs. Oh my god! Like, come on, to complete the look. I think the only real prop might have been the um, the hands, where the <laughs> the bulk actually like punches the guy. They use they spray painted purple like the green Hulk hands. God. Well, not only that, the the scene with the helicopter, they just spray painted the the bald cop purple and had him grab that helicopter. Oh, you're right. That was him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. At the end of the yeah. movie, um, the bulk is supposedly killed with the nuclear bomb they drop on him, right? And as is the the CGI dog. Um, but he's not. He shows back up at the at the his girlfriend's house, right? Which is also her dad's house. Uh, proposes to her there finally, and then the dad finds him. They wrestle for about five seconds, God. fall off a balcony, <laughs> and then die. Like literally, <laughs> actually die. Because the next scene is in a CGI shitty looking cemetery. The movie ends with him dead until that cop pisses on his grave and then he comes back to life. <laughs> with his fucking party city Hulk hands. Amazing bulk too. Jay, what, you, what what's your question? Well, I just, uh, you know, I'm thinking about the amazing bulk and how it's a, kind of the mockbuster superhero. I was just curious um, if you guys were going to be mockbuster superheroes, who mm, would you be? Excellent question. I would be the steel snowboarder. <laughs> I like the silver surfer. I'd just be like a crappy looking version of a guy who snowboards, but he's like wait, all wait, silver. Wait, wait, hold shiny. on a second. Are you saying that you would be Shaquille O'Neal in the movie <laughs> Steel as a, <laughs> as as a, a snowboarder? snowboarder yes. Okay, I like that. I would be the um, mockbuster... Of the ancient Nordic god Gore, who's trying to fight global warming with 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 mm. lightning, because he's trying to fix electricity through the power of lightning. He's harnessing lightning. There's there's a message behind yeah. it, you know. Yeah, exactly. Nice. I just like to go down hills in <laughs> snow, as as Shaq. But whatever, you have a cause. All right, Paul. What, what do you? What would well, you be? Uh, you 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 guys know that I'm a, a big fan of the Fantastic Four, um, and I think it's really unfortunate though those movies have not worked out well. I think the main reason is because they call the Thing, the Thing. I don't think that's a very good name for him. So I would kind of be a different version of him, and I'll call myself the Rock, and I would have like <laughs> I don't know like cr- crazy catchphrases like. Uh, <laughs> It's just off the top of my head, like, do you smell what the rock is cooking? <laughs> Something like that, you know? Nice. Yeah. Nice. So you wouldn't you wouldn't turn into a rock though, right? Like you wouldn't have rock skin or anything? Yeah, I would. <laughs> you <Yeah>. would. Okay. <laughs> Except for your eyebrows. Yeah, I I had reg- regular eyebrows and, and just like look like a total like cool dude and just like I don't know, like drop elbows on people. It'd be sweet. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Hudson, what do you got? Chris, you gotta round out the team. I'd be silverware and I would like have spoons that Spoons or forks, something really cheap that would pop out of my knuckles, and I'd give people uh, soup. Silver what? Silverwareine. So you would never need like a spoon. Silver. Yeah, I'd never need a spoon or a fork or anything. I'd just be eating my mashed potatoes with my spoon popping out of my knuckles. With your feeding with other your people. Fists. <laughs> oh, silverware. God, it's, I'm over here trying to figure out what you're saying. Silverwareine. <laughs> That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. That's pretty good. <laughs> I think this would make a great movie. We should just get some clip art. Some spoons, some forks. Yeah, we could do it. Mike, what's the rating system? Rating time. 
I okay, so I want to rate this one out of a hundred bulk nados. One? one? No, no, one to a hundred bulk nados. How many bulk nados would you give this? Because I think that's kind of what was going on when he transformed. So, um, okay, I'll start it off, and I'll tell you guys. Jesus Christ. Um, fuck it. <laughs> 78 hmm. bulk nados. Oh, God. What? God. I, dude. Wow. No, one of the big oh. appeals of this movie, and when I think about a, a certain class of B-movies, is watching it with someone who hasn't seen it and, and, and enjoying their reaction. Like, this movie has such a goddamn reaction situation to it that I want to experience it Every, uh, with other people so they can like I can confirm yeah. that I'm surprised you haven't yet you've watched it five I've, fucking times I've like, asked are you, I've asked people to watch torture. it with me and they're like I'm busy I can't I was like dude I'll watch it even before like but everyone's just been busy I haven't had a chance to watch this with anyone so I'm I'm gonna wow. I would I'd like to be there Mike alright let's do it buddy Jay what do you rate it um I'm gonna go I'm gonna go 42 bulk natos okay I enjoyed it uh, wouldn't say it's you know among my favorite movies, but I, I there's a place for it and there's a time for it, and I can understand that. I'm I'm gonna go a little bit higher than that. I I mentioned earlier that I'm really still on the fence as to whether or not this was a complete joke or a genuine effort to make a movie. So I gotta go right down the middle. I'm gonna go 50 bulk nados. Do I have to rate this movie? Yeah. You know you, you know what? Okay. Well, here's the thing. I did not like this movie at all. I mean, that was just I mean, I think really? at I all? think it had my my jaw dropped through the entire 3 hour and 45 minute runtime. It was just terrible. <laughs> that's that's good. But, that's a good but, thing. Well, yeah, I guess so, but having said that, I I think Mike's right. I would really like to watch this with someone else just so you have this shared pain. Yeah, so, it's like Malort. Think, this movie is Mal- yeah. the Malort of bad movies. Oh, yes, God. this is cinematic Malort. I think Malort... <laughs> <laughs> I think... uh, you know, can we just mention real quick, because if, if we have people listening who are maybe not from the Chicagoland area, Malort is a, a alcoholic liqueur that is literally... The worst, it's like a skunk puking into a bottle. It's the worst thing you've ever tasted. It's urine passing through a dandelion. It's it's sadness mixed with grass clippings. 37. 37 purple asses, or whatever we're rating this as. Butt tornadoes, is that what we're using? 37 butt tornadoes? Let me give it 37 butt tornadoes. And then, but I, I could raise it if I get to have someone else. It's like the ring. You make someone else watch this, you pass your pain on to them. Guys, good ratings. Great movie, I'm going to say. I'm going to, on behalf of all of us, fantastic movie. On the next episode of B-Movie Mania. Well, guys, there is a hot, new, young filmmaker out there that I recently discovered, and I want to tell you about him. His name is Neil Breen. And I think you guys... Breen, 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 Breen,